everybody, Gamer Penny here bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy XIV Online Let's Play. And we are getting straight into it with the Naval Hard. <laughs> uh, this is where the quest took us last time. But for some reason, we've got to fight Titan again on hard mode. One of my favorite fights, I think. Um, definitely with the music. So, we should be good. Um, I think we died last time we did this, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay this time. Alright, let's get in there. Start getting them down. Oh, I gotta remember, man, we don't have all of our... I was trying to do ley lines in Anakian, we don't have that stuff. Alright, well... On it, but all right. Oh, oh gosh, one of the healers just got completely bounced. He's got a solo heal uh, for the rest of the fight, which kind of sucks. I know what that feels like, and that is not fun. Another person just got the tank got pushed off. God. Done. Heal everyone up, please. Top us off, man. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I don't know if I got all that. Oh, I did. Am I the only one? How am I the only one alive? It's me in the tank. <laughs> Help. Don't worry guys, I got this. I solo this. <laughs> oh no, he's putting me in the... I should have jumped off because now I'm just stuck in the rock. Go on, go on. <laughs> what? What now? I rock. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay. We'll give it another go. That's okay. This one could be kind of tough, especially if that other healer gets pushed way off like that. Um, this one, it's a little bit of a tough fight. You really got to stay on your guard. Oh god. Like <laughs> uh 
pushing nothing this way. this one but I'll just move over here. The other healer is dead again. But I don't think they're pushed off so they could potentially be risen. Nope. Alright, who is he? We're gonna help get them out of this rock. Make sure everyone's tapped off. Only got one person dead this time. Blah! <laughs> Alright. Alright, now. Take this on. Kill that thick rock, the guy who got pushed off the edge says. <laughs> sure we got it this time <laughs> okay <laughs> he heard me he knew what I was gonna say Definitely. Uh, I don't use this nuts, but uh, X potion might help a little bit. Yeah, if we could get someone's limit break, but that barely did anything. Don't worry, we've we've got it here. Whew. There we go. We did it. Bye, Titan. Commons, please? Yeah, right. Um, I'm gonna give it to Aofrux, because they were the ones that did not die all the time. We will greet the heck out of those, just in case we get them. We can use them. They look cool, I think. Everyone done? I think the samurai got them. Yeah, he got them. Okay. Alright, let's leave. Alright. Search for Elfino and Camp Overlook. Let's head back to Elfino. Well, that was fun. I really liked that one. I, we usually do not pass the first attempt. <laughs> I'm surprised we weren't ones that got pushed off, but I think I've done 
am enough by now. Maybe call myself okay at <laughs> our Titan. Um, no, this is not it. I was gonna do this as for, uh, Gunbreaker, I think. Hell if you know, we took out Titan. Ah, there she is. Did I not tell you she would return safe and sound? The deed is done, then. Titan is no more. Good. There has been enough tragedy this day. We are ha still having the music problem. He has been like that since he regained consciousness. We believe he can hear us, but he has made no attempt to respond. He is almost certainly still in shock, but... But we cannot discount the possibility that he succumbed to the Primal's influence. Should that prove to be the case? He must be put to death. Like any other thrall. Such is the Alliance's policy, yes? You have the right of it. But we must not rush to conclusions. After all, we once feared that Ysail's followers were beyond reason, and many have since laid down their arms and accepted Ishgard's peace. We can but watch, wait, and pray. Ah, poor kiddo. Hey, um, I also, you may have noticed, I turned off our name and the names of other players. Just, uh, someone suggested it, and I think it was, um, oh jeez, I forgot who suggested it. Someone, Vegas Sims, maybe, suggested it, that we take off, uh, the name so that we look a, a little bit more immersive, so, um, that's what we did. Uh, there's not to be gained from dwelling on an eventually over, what? Oh, there's not to be gained from dwelling on an eventuality over which we have no control, much less one which may never even come to pass. Let us tend to more immediate matters, informing Commander Bloyden of Titan's demise, for example. You may be certain that he will be glad of the news. Would you be so kind as to break it to him? Sure, we can go tell Bloyden. Bloyden, Bloyden, bum ba dum ba dum I think it does give it a little bit more immersive instead of seeing like all these names and pet names and stuff floating minion names and stuff. Um, ah, you're a sight for sore eyes. When the others came back without you, I feared the worst, but they said you had matters well in hand. This is our little minion, by the way. <laughs> Poro Roro. Poro, what is his name? Poro Roro? <laughs> I don't know. I'll settle then, is it? I'm glad to hear it, but not half as glad as my men will be. Believe you me. Regardless of whether or not he has summoned properly, a primal's a primal, and there ain't a soul in the maelstrom that hasn't lost a friend to one. Don't get me wrong, like, we were all prepared to do our part, but we weren't so naive as to think we'd live to tell the tale. Thankfully, of course, it didn't come to that, which, my friend, sounds to me like cause for celebration. Now, I know you lot have places to be, but why not stay the night? We'd be honored to raise a glass to the triumphant return of Titan's Bane. Sure. Elfino and Bloyden. And Alice and uh, our little friend. Who goes there? Just us. Oh, it's you. Forgive me for straying from the camp. He hasn't been feeling too welcome, to say the least. I thought a change of scenery might do him good. But, alas. You come sit by you. It's so quiet out here. The stars spread out before us, beckoning across time and space. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. How bitterly beautiful, those words. I should be stronger for all my experiences, yet my heart aches more than ever. I never understood why Grandfather gave his life that day. I thought that if I came here, I would find the answers I needed. 
But when I finally laid eyes on the land he sacrificed everything to save, saw firsthand the bickering, the pettiness, I was disappointed. I was angry. I could not fathom how these people were more deserving of his love than his family, than me. Nevertheless, I had to believe he had good reason. I was determined to uncover the whole truth of the calamity and, perhaps in so doing, find my own purpose in this sea of chaos. Hmm. My travels have been enlightening, but I cannot say that I have enjoyed them. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. There were others, of course. Good people. People with whom I felt a kinship. Whose lives I could not save. Same. I found myself asking what it was all for. Why try if I was doomed to fail in the end? But then oh. I recalled grandfather's words to my father, years ago, before he left Charlayan behind forever. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the manner of our own choosing. We have to try, do we not? Of course, it's one thing to try and another to do. There were times while I was tracking the warriors of darkness when I faltered, when I was afraid. But then I thought of my brother, of Uri Angers. Oh, pray forgive me. This conversation has been rather one-sided, hasn't it? Mayhap you could recount some of your adventures in Ishgard. Um, traveled far and wide with two companions, Estinia and Nacelle, who were very pleasure to fight alongside Sir Amric when Elf and I came to the Drew. I think we're going to talk about Estinia and Nacelle, because she, she mentioned, um, companions that she failed to save and kind of how we felt about them, or Yasale at least, and Portia Font. Gods! They must have been at each other's throats from dawn till dusk. I dare say you managed to keep the peace, though. Merely being in the presence of the Warrior of Light is surely enough to shame anyone into behaving. <laughs> the hopes and dreams of so many rest on your shoulders, Warrior of Light. As long as the sun rises, we can but carry on. For the sake of those we hold dear. I think Alice is really wise, like beyond her, beyond her years. But also hot-headed, <laughs> which I, I think make I think it makes for a really interesting character. Hello, warrior of darkness. Where is he? Uh, Horizon. To what end dost thou cling to the tainted gifts of the mother? Mm. Every tool has its purpose. Even this. Well, what is it? The seeds sown in Vilbrand have been plucked from the earth and left to wither. Alas, Titan's demise sufficed not to drive the kobolds to deepest desperation. What did the man in white have to say? That we are to proceed as he did first set forth. Well, that's easy for him to say! It's not his bloody world on the brink of destruction, is it? Mm. Be thou well reminded that with an end to Ishgard's unrest, naught now remaineth to preoccupy the Scion's thoughts. And thus may they devote their every energy to thwarting thee and thine. I foresee only greater difficulties ahead. Foresee? Are you sure you don't welcome them? 
I'm starting to think you might hold a candle for your old friends after all. Mm. Pray do not mistake mine intent. I but look upon the path which lieth before us with due trepidation. Shouldst thou be of like mind, pray consider then another course. For the power to invoke the ardor belongeth not unto the Assians alone. With thine own hand strike down thine enemy, the so-called hero who would see thy home lost to light. Do but this, and thou wouldst at a single stroke disrupt the all-too-delicate balance of this realm, plunging her straightways into chaos. Is he telling the warrior of darkness to kill us? You do realize what you're suggesting, yes? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. Uh, so Alice the words just are my said. teacher, and a creed I hold close to my heart. So we kind of know who that guy is now. <laughs> Very well. Draw her out. We'll make it quick. Mm. It shall be done. <sighs> I'm upset. <laughs> what good a creed one cannot uphold. What hurts soothed. What lives saved. Oh, hapless fool, what hast thou wrought by thine own hands? Minfilia, my friends, I shall not now beg your forgiveness. Full deeply, though it paineth me to walk it, I shall not stray from my chosen path. As Moonbreeder remains steadfast, so too shall I. Uh huh. Oh boy, we're in for it now. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Alfino. So obviously, um, if you're not familiar with the story, you can kind of see who that is. If you haven't drawn two and two together yet. Um, boy, are you in for a surprise, so. What ho, Vesper, I trust you had a good night's rest. I was but this moment speaking of Thancred and Yastola via Link... Via Link Pearl. They had some interesting news to share. Apparently, during the course of their respective investigations, both came across crates which had once borne Ishgardian seals. It would seem that someone in the capital has been very busy indeed. Accordingly, the Temple Knights have launched a full-scale investigation. Sir Amerk believes that it is only a matter of time before the culprits are found, but we shall have to wait and see. In the meantime, it seems only prudent to look into the recent activities of the other tribes, in case they too are flush with his guardian crystals. And with that in mind, I suggest we pay Arianje another- Wait, where's Elise? She was here a moment ago, with Gabu. Uh... Gabu? Here we go. Poor Gabu. Ah, uh, let me guess. It's time to leave, isn't it? My apologies for disappearing again. If it is any consolation, I have already packed my things. How is he? Brother, Commander Bloyden, something tells me you are not solely here out of concern for his welfare. But to answer your question, there has been no change. He will not speak or eat. I'm not even sure if he slept. If he did, he seems none the better for it. He just shuffles about with the same expression on his face. You will look after him, won't you, Commander? And treat him with every kindness? He's still in there. I know it. Beneath the anguish and the despair, he's still fighting with all his heart. He deserves to be given that chance, until he comes back to us, until we know for certain what has become of him. 
Aye, aye, you needn't worry. If he hadn't risked his neck to warn us and help you secure the better part of the crystals, this could have turned out a damn sight worse than it did. We'll not soon forget that, and nor will Maestrom command. I'm so sorry, Gabu. I truly am. You should never have been made to, and I know I cannot possibly understand. Mayhap there is nothing I can do or say. The pain, the anger, the helplessness. Hold fast to the memories of better times. Remember them as they were. And when it hurts so much your heart feels fit to burst, let it burst. Let it burst and fill up again with your love for them, and never ever forget. Come along, little one. I... I will remember them. And you, Alice. Thank you. <gasps> Yay, he said something. And that's it. He's just traumatized, the poor kiddo. Have faith, the sister. Your words have reached him. In time, he will recover. And those who orchestrated these events will be made to answer for their crimes. A thousand times over, I there will be a reckoning. She's in for blood, man. Okay. Return to the Waking Sands. Of course we go back to the Waking Sands. Alright, sorry. Just taking a drink. Trying to... <laughs> I thought I had time. Okay. the waking sands we go oh someone pointed out what that uh, thing was over there and that's uh, one of the cast rooms where we fought uh, oh geez what was his name the big guy I think the big guy that was with um, with the Imperial army all right here we are at the waking sands and let us go inside. <clears throat> Ariange. We have heard the glad tidings from Ongamoro, my friends. By the grace of the Twelve and your most valiant efforts, the people of Limsa Lominsa may rest easy. I should like to think so, yes. Though we failed to prevent the Lord of Craigs from manifesting, we did succeed in weakening him, enabling our friend to dispatch him before the warriors of darkness could make matters worse. T'was by no means an unmitigated success, but it will have to, su have to suffice. Then let us speak of another matter, one which weigheth heavy on my lady's mind. As thou didst request, I sought out the Gerun oracles, that we might better understand the aims of the warriors of darkness. Though their copious use of allegory defieth any single interpretation, the oracles paint a most disturbing picture, one of the worlds parallel to our own, apart yet linked, reduced to ruin with every umbral calamity. Seven times have they succeeded. Then of ten and three, only six worlds remain. Aye, all is as my lady Minfilia spake unto thee. As for what becometh of these reflections when they and the source are rejoined, frail flesh undone in umbral fires, each soul surrendereth to her call, to flow into the endless sea, there to endure as one and none. Then, then if the warrior of, warriors of darkness succeed, everyone in their world will die? In essence, I, the verse speaketh of the renunciation of the flesh and subsequent return to the life stream. However, this fate may yet be preferable to the alternative, for if the first were to fall to transcendent light in the manner of the warriors of darkness described, it would give away 
No, it would give way unto a void wherein none may know either life or death. Far better to die, they reason, for in death there is life. The essence of a soul which returneth unto the source may be born anew, saved. Such, at least, is their belief, I surmise. That is true, then. Gods. No one should ever have to make such a choice. Ere we speak further on this subject, I would share with thee another recent discovery. It would seem that several sizable shipments of crystals have been delivered into the hands of certain Elamegan parties. Elamegans? Strange. And you believe this to be the work of the Samish guardian smugglers who supplied the beast tribes? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And lest thou wonder at their motive, I would remind you that the Asians did once attempt to bring about the summoning of Railgar. The individuals who took receipt of these shipments are refugees belonging to a group devoted to the cause of Elamegan liberation. It may also interest thee to know that their Ishgardian suppliers appear to be none other than the remnants of El Eline Royale, Royale Network of Spies. She's the one who um, poisoned the queen, right? Or the, the um, not queen. Yeah. Queen? Nano animal? <laughs> Surely you jest, and yet it is not so surprising. Bereft of leadership and hunted by the Alliance, I can well imagine such villains being desperate enough to conspire with the Asians, assuming they even know or care who their new employers are. All of which is irrelevant. Forgive me, we must seek out the resistance group with which received the crystals without delay. Vesper, Alice, will you come with me to little Alamigo? Yes, of course. I should like to hear what they have to say for themselves, firsthand. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. She knows. Elfino, Alice, Vesper, are you three listening? Good, I have tidings. The Temple Knights raided the smuggler's warehouse less than an hour ago. A cursory interrogation of the prisoners yielded confirmation that they were in the ploy of, and I hope you are sitting down, a man in black robes. Then you have them, and the crystals too. What few remained, I? Regrettably, it would seem they dispatched one final shipment in the hours before we struck. T'was bound for little Alamigo, we are told, where it will be received by members of a local resistance group. Since Sir Amric's men no longer have need of my services, I have a mind to head that way. As do we, by happy coincidence. We learned of the shipments but a few moments ago. Ha! Huh. And there I was thinking I might finally be one step ahead of the Warrior of Light and her little helpers. Ah, wait a moment, there is more. And I defy you not to be surprised by this revelation. The leader of the Ishgardian smugglers was formerly in the ploy of one Eline Royale, the infamous Ivy herself. Once again, Thancred, I fear my, I must inform you that... Thancred, with whom else have you shared this information? About the smugglers? No one. As I think I mentioned, the raid was less than an hour ago. I was planning to contact Yastola next, but is there someone else you would have me notify first? No, there isn't. Uh-huh. I'm surprised we don't pick up on it, you know? Get off, you know? What in the world has gotten into her? It is twice now that we have sought Uriange's aid, and twice she has treated him as if he were a stranger. The Archon was one of Grandfather's most dedicated pupils, and spent as much time in the Levier estate as we did. He's practically a member of the family. Truth be told, I struggle to recall a day from my childhood when I did not see the three of them laughing together. If this continues, I may have to raise the matter. Later, though, little Alamigo awaits. Alright. To little Alamigo. Head there. Hi, Ariange. I will get to the bottom of this. Oh, forgive me. I was... It has been a long day. Did you have something to say? No, just, uh... Ariange. Oh, I... I've always struggled to understand what's going on in his head, now more than ever. 
Listen, Vesper, if anything should happen, it should be me who... Just know that I am prepared to do what must be done. Right then, to more pressing matters. Since we have no idea when Thancred might arrive, I suggest we see what information we can gather in his absence. Okay. So to review, we are reliably informed that members of the Alamegan Resistance operating here have taken receipt of several large shipments of crystals, our task being to ascertain who and why. Given the size of the settlement, I find it hard to believe that anyone here could be wholly unaware of the Resistance movements. The challenge, of course, will be finding individuals who are both able and willing to share such information with outsiders. It would seem sensible to divide our forces. Vesper, why don't you question the residents in the eastern half of town? Alice and I will do the same in the west, and afterwards we can rendezvous here to share our findings. Alright, we will go over this way. Bum, 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 bum. Um, I'm gonna go up just in case it is up here, but I can also go down if needed. Oatalin. Hello. Eh? The resistance? Damned if I know. It's not as if I'd be any use to them. <laughs> if you yet- if you set store by all these tales of secret weapons, good luck to you. But I'm too old for the mask's bedtime stories. This is our lot, and it's time we got used to it. Alright. Uh... Shall we go down? Ooh. Sifrid. Hey, buddy. Ah, uh, let me guess. Come to join the fight, have you? No need to deny it, friend. You're not the first to answer the Griffin's call. While he's lit a fire in every Alamegan's heart, he's also inspired more than a few Aldens to pledge themselves to the cause. And little wonder, the Garleans won't stop until we're all under the yoke. The Griffin. Talibut. I see you going. I see you there, going around asking questions, looking for the Griffin and his lot, I'll bet. Seems they're the talk of... Yeah, seems they're the talk of little Alamigo these days. Folk wondering what he's about, what he's got in store for the Garleans, and what's under his mask, of course. Some say he's hardly got a face, what with all the scars. Others reckon he's been marked for death by the Empire, and that they'd send a bloody legion if they knew he was here. Your guess is as good as mine. Interesting. Curiouser and curiouser. There's a resistance leader named Griffin, or the Griffin. Alright, I found out some stuff. Hey, bud. Elfie, no? I suppose I should ask what you learned, but I think I already know. This Griffin seems to be the leader of a newly formed faction within the Resistance, the Masts, yet despite their growing popularity, no one seems to know much about them, only that they are the most aggressively militant group to join the movement in recent memory. Indeed, many claim their commitment to the cause of Alamegan liberation is unrivaled. We can but hope their revolutionary fervor is never channeled in the direction of a primal. Though I feel confident that this is the group which received the crystal shipments, we yet lack proof. Before taking any action, I would speak with the settlement's leader to confirm my suspicions, and mayhap enlist his help while I am about it. Given that you and Gundelbald are already acquainted, mayhap it would be best if you took the lead. Shall we? Sure, we will talk to Gundelbald. Even though we got his, uh, that kid killed in the... What was his name? The one kid that, like, was defiant of us. Here, and then he joined uh, Elfino's little group. He got, uh, he got killed, man. Much as it pleases me to see you again, Vesper, I cannot help but wonder if I should be worried. I hear you and yours have been asking questions. The Griffin. I I know of him, as do we all. He and his masks have become a leading faction within the Resistance. Though there was suspicion at first given his secretive ways, he quickly proved himself a charismatic and capable commander. Men are drawn to his passion and his vision. They truly believe that he has what it takes to lead them to victory. Even I cannot help but admire the man for what he's accomplished. But I have not forgotten Wilred. Wilred was his name. I was blind to the dangers of his ambitions, and you were not. The griffin will soon deliver a speech to our people at the sunken temple of Corn. Go and see him with your own eyes. Weigh his words with your own heart. How convenient. Tis but a pity Thancred is not here to join us. 
You two go on ahead. I shall stay behind and wait for him. Alright. We'll go see this guy and what he has to say. Uh, is there a door out this way? We can fly. <laughs> Might be quicker than trying to find our way through that place. Rendezvous with Elfino at the sunken temple of Karn. There we are. Is this a player? Diana Brightmoon. She looks cool. I like her outfit. <laughs> Alright. Is this a player? They look cool too. Alright, Alfino. Has it begun already? I hear voices coming from within. Here we go. That must be him, the griffin. Brothers and sisters, 20 years ago, Alamigo, our home, was claimed by the Garlean Empire. I like his voice. In our haste to overthrow the King of Ruin, we turned a blind eye to our foes in the north. With our glorious revolution, we but laid a path for a new tyrant to succeed the old. And when confronted with our failure, we fled. Not a day goes by that I do not think of those we left behind. Think of them and feel ashamed. And I know each and every one of you feels the same. We abandoned them, our own flesh and blood, to labor till their backs gave in and their breath gave out, building the twisted steel ramparts which now mar our once majestic mountains. We abandoned them, the brave and true to fight and die for their country. Or worse, to be conscripted and sent off to rob another poor bastard of his home. We abandon them, the meek and powerless, to bow and scrape when the Garleans pass, to sully themselves that they might live to see another day of misery. The Black Wolf may be dead. But a new Imperial Viceroy reigns in Alamigo now. A beast, not a fraction as merciful. Mm. You all know the Aeorzean Alliance will do not to oppose him. For all their promises and platitudes, they will not act if there's no profit in it. Only we can free our brothers and sisters from the Empire's tyranny, my friends. Only we have the courage to stand and fight. They have imprisoned us. They have enslaved us. And they have murdered us. But no more. Blood demands blood. And the Garleans shall pay for every drop they have spilt upon our lands. This, I promise you, for we have a power within us, my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. Only join us, and we shall grant you the means to unleash it. And together, we shall see the Alamegan standard raised over the mountains of Gear Arbania once more. I mean, he's got a good, uh, um... Like, he makes good a points. A power befitting their pride. Not at all ominous, that. He's a good, um, auditor, I guess. Like, Wait, is speech. That... What? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Papalimo and Ida 
What are you two doing here? Yeah, good question. I could ask you the same thing. <laughs> well, well, this is quite the surprise. Hey, a reunion if you at see last. What I see. If you feel as I feel. Might I suggest we continue this conversation in more agreeable surroundings? Yes, please. Not strength of arms that will win this battle. Well, we found uh, Ida and Papalimo. The game's almost all back together. All right, well, guys, that is going to be where we end the episode on this cliffhanger, uh, trying to find out what they have to say for themselves, Ida, Papalimo. Um, so, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. If you do want to see more of the Final Fantasy XIV online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye, everyone.